It's just about time to begin our Sunday night worship service. We would like to welcome everyone to Liberty Church of Christ and I'd like to extend a special welcome to those that may be visiting with us. Leading us in our worship tonight, our song leader is Jeff Gray. The opening song will be number two, if you'd like to be turning there. Our opening prayer, Larry Henry. Uh, the Lord's Supper and Giving after services tonight will be taken care of by Don Lee. And our closing prayer by the Malcolm Kirkendall. There's a few announcements. A reminder, the collection box for uh, Van Roberts and his family is still in the back, and uh, we will take care of all of that tonight after services, so if you'd still like to donate, it is still available to do that. Also, next Sunday, our one-day gospel meeting, uh, speaker David Lopp. Um, we will have, of course, a class at 9 and then worship service at 10. Uh, lunch will follow the morning worship and then afternoon worship at 1. Do not have to bring any food. Everything will be provided. Uh, so invite everyone to stay for lunch uh, Sunday. On the sympathy that needs to be mentioned, uh, Denise Bradford, uh, this is Diane Russell's sister, and Lee Russell's aunt, need to remember that family. Uh, the Barbara Ritchie family, this is Jerry D's uh, sister, uh, passed away, need to remember them. On the special prayer request, we've got several uh, and a few more added tonight from this morning. Uh, of course, Coach Roberts goes to M.D. Anderson uh, this week. Need to remember him and his family. Uh, pray, for, uh, pray for them. Also, Jeff McCain will be having a procedure next Thursday. Uh, Chastity George, um, J.D. Martin, she is at home uh, and, and recovering there. Lexi Carr, Lori Oaks. Joe Ewing, uh, Jonathan Nunley, uh, Billy Daniels, we mentioned this morning, had a leg amputated. Um, and my uncle J.W. Moody and Jessica Jackson, they have both been tested positive for COVID, uh, so we need to remember them. Also, the, uh, the fruit basket list is in the foyer. The deadline for the sign-up is Wednesday night. That's December the 15th. And they will be put together, and you may pick them up next Sunday, December the 19th. I believe this is all the announcements that we have. We'll begin our services with a prayer. Bow with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, and we, we want to thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, for the love you show us. Mostly, Lord, we want to thank you for Jesus, the blood that he shed for us. Lord, we ask you, there's so many in our community and in our congregation that are sick. I can't remember all the names. I'm not going to try because I, you know them. But, Lord, I ask you to be with them, help them, heal them, help the doctors, the ones who are having surgeries. Lord, we ask you to be with the families that, that lost their loved ones. We ask you to touch their hearts and help them get through this time. Lord, we ask you tonight as we study your word to help us to listen attentively and open our minds and to learn. And Lord, we ask you to help us be better Christians because of the things that we learn. We ask you to help us each day to be an example in the community for you, for this church, and to lead others to you. We ask you for your help in this and your guidance, and we ask you for the opportunities, Lord. But we ask you to forgive us when we fail you. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hides my soul in the 
in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He guides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness transported, I rise to meet him in clouds o'er the sky. His perfect salvation is wonderful love. I'll shout with millions on high. He guides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He guides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. Number 150, 150. <clears throat> there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of Seventy three, two hundred seventy three, two hundred seventy three. In vain, in I, in holy lays my soul, her great. For voice would raise, for who can sing the worthy praise of the wonderful love of Jesus? Wonderful love, wonderful love, wonderful love of Jesus. Wonderful love, wonderful love, wonderful love of Jesus. 
us, my hope for pardon when I call my trust for lifting when I fall. Mark that same opening, number 274, be their invitation song. 274. Let me get this uh, moving on. Get me some power going on. We got it. Good evening. It's great that everybody's here to worship God. If you will, get your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter number 4. And we'll look at verses 21 through 25 for our lesson tonight. Mark chapter number 4, verses 21 through 25. is where we will be drawing our lesson tonight. You know, the Word of God, understanding the Word of God is what I have entitled that. The Word of God, this is the Bible, it's God's inspired Word. And the Word of God tells us what to do to be saved, what we can expect when we die, we can be with God forever. But the Word of God sheds light on everything, spiritually, and our future, in the, in the heavenly realm, but also in the physical realm. We want to know how to better our relationships if we want to know how to deal with people and how to have a happier life, it's all in the Word of God. These principles are there. I love what Brother Larry prayed in his prayer. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. When he's talking about, we thank you for your, your Word, we thank you for the Bible, he said it helps us to be better Christians because of what we learn. When we learn God's principles in His Word, it helps us and causes us to be better Christians. And that's certainly what we want to be. And it is the light. That's the picture that I chose. There's the lamp that is talked about in Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. It talks about your lamp. That's what a lamp may look like in their day, filled with oil, and then they light it with that little wick in the end. And the lamp of God, the lamp, the light in that text is the Word of God. Now, I realize that in the Bible we talk about the light. Who is the light? Well, in John chapter number 8, verse number 12, the Bible says this, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. So we know that Jesus is the light of the world. But in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14, during the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, talking to the crowd, You are the light of the world. So we got Jesus saying, I'm the light of the world. And we got Jesus saying, You are the light of the world. Well, make up your mind. What's the light of the world? We also see in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, here's what Paul said. In whom the God of this world, little g, that's Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. People who don't believe, their minds are blinded, and the God of this world is responsible for blinding their, their mind. Lest, his, unless, what? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So the gospel is the light of the world. The God of this world tries to blind the people who are unbelievers, but when you become a believer and you believe in the word of God, you believe the gospel, it sheds light to the world. Why? Because it's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. So which is it? Is it Jesus? Is it you? Is it the gospel? It's all. It's all because it all comes from God's Word. Jesus said in John 1 that He was the Word, right? 
And, and that's the gospel. That's the truth. Jesus is the Word. Christians follow Christ, and in doing so, the Word of Christ, the Word of God is implanted into our lives, and we show these principles to the world. So the Word of God is in us. The Word is the light of the world. And that's what he's talking about in Mark 4, verses 21 through 25. That lamp is the Word of God. And, of course, that's Jesus, and that's us as we show the... Sometimes we're the only Bible the world would read. You understand uh, that that's been sang in a song? We understand that concept. When they see our lives, they're actually seeing the Word of God, and it can lighten the world that way. But let's look at the Word of God. We want to understand the Word of God. And to do so, we're going to look at this few verses in Mark 4 to help us to understand... Uh, what, how can we approach the Word of God? Now, the, if we go from Genesis to Revelation. We're not going to about to talk tonight about all the principles that are found and how we can understand all the mysteries. No, we're going to understand here how to approach it. How do we approach it so that we can understand the Word of God? So let's begin. The first thing is to understand that there is purpose. There is a purpose in the Word of God and understanding the Word of God. Look at verse number 21. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or a basket or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? Jesus is asking a common sense question. Do you take light and put a basket over it? No. Do you take that light, that little candle, and put it under a, a couch or a bed or some place where it... No. What do you do with it? You take it and you put it on high up on a candlestick. Why? Because then it can give light to the whole room. We've got to understand the purpose of the gospel, the purpose of the Word of God. It is not to be taken to yourself and say, okay, I'm going to keep it here and I'm not going to tell anybody about it. I'm not going to share it with anybody. No. So when you're studying the Bible, all you're doing it is just to memorize Scripture and maybe do something. No, it's to take these principles, put them into our life, and then show it out of our lives. That is what the purpose of the gospel is. That's why we understand the Word of God. We know that there's a, a, a greater purpose. What? To give light to everybody. Light to show people this is a better way. That you can live a better life. It is to give light to the world. That's why we are the light of the world. Because we are showing them the Word of God. But also in understanding the Word of God, not just to understand that there's a purpose for it, but also it has great potential. Great potential. Look at verse number 22. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. And that word manifested means to make known. There is nothing hid. There shall not be made manifest. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Here's the point. The Word of God can shed light on everything. There's mysteries in the Word of God, that's true. But as we dig into it, as we study it, we can see that it can bring light into these issues in our life. There's great potential in studying the Word of God. So many people, I don't want to study the Word of God. It's just too, it's just too many pages. It's too much. No. If you understand there's a purpose that you can get light, and there's potential that it can uncover some things that will help your life better, then you are well on your way to understanding the Word of God. It's the potential of doing that. It's unfortunate. Now, a lot of people think here, well, there's nothing hidden that won't be revealed. Well, he's talking about your sins. Well, you know, you, you're hiding in the dark and you're committing sins, and therefore, one of these days that's going to be revealed and shame on you. Well, it's true that your sins will find you out, and my sins will be revealed someday. That's all true. But in this text, he's talking about the potential of the Word of God shedding not light on your sins, but only, but also light on how to be a better person, how to be a better Christian. That's what the Word of God can do. It has purpose, it has potential, and you got to pay attention to it. If you want to take advantage of the wisdom of God, the, the Word of God, and its purpose, and, and take more advantage of the potential that it has in your life, you've got to pay attention. Look at verse number 23. If any man have ears to hear, 
let him hear. Now, of course, we have ears to hear, right? But that's not his point that you got an ear. No. His point is, if you really want to gain the purpose of the Word of God, you want to gain the potential of the Word of God, then you better listen. Listen carefully. That, if you don't pay attention, if you don't listen, then you cannot, you cannot find this purpose. You cannot find this potential. you got to pay attention. Somebody told me in business, they said, look, if you want an area of your business to get better, then watch it. If you want, some, think about it. If I don't watch the balance sheet, if I don't watch the profit and loss statement, if I don't watch the sales records, if I don't watch the employee uh, accounting, if I don't watch it, then, then it's not going to get better. The, what I pay attention to gets better. Let's say that I want to lose some weight. I say, well, let's lose some weight. Well, if you don't pay attention to your weight, what are you eating? What, the scales in the bathroom, you got to step on them. you got to measure it. you got to pay attention to it. If you don't pay attention to what you're eating, you don't pay attention to what you're weighing, then you're not going to gain the benefit. Whatever you pay attention to gets better. So if you spend the time and pay attention to the Word of God, then you will actually see its potential to help your life. You will actually understand there's a purpose to help people and to shine light on things. But you got to pay attention. What does that mean to us in the Word of God? Read it. Read it. Study it. Get you some tapes. Listen to it. Pay attention to the Word of God. Most people want the benefits from the Word of God. They want to see the truth, but they don't pay attention to the Word of God. It is so unfortunate. But that's how it works. That's how it works. Because you've got to understand there's a process. Folks just want to turn on the switch and all of a sudden you understand the Word of God. No, there's a process to it. Listen to the process in verse 24. He said unto them, Take heed what you hear. Think about that. Pay attention, but pay attention to what you hear. Lots of folks want to go out and listen to the uh, doctrine of some self-help guru. He says, I'm okay. He says, everybody's going to go to heaven in a little rowboat. I want to hear that. I've got itching ears, so I want to find out that I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. No. If you want to know the truth, if you want to know what the, the light is, the potential, and you, you pay attention, but you pay attention to the truth. Be careful what you hear. Make sure it's truth. Make sure that content is, is right. And it is, in fact, the Word of God. But that's not the only process to pay attention to what you hear. Make sure it's the Bible. He goes on to say, With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. Now think about that. That's part of this process now. What measure, that's a quantity, that you meet. And that word meet means give out. If you meet something, M-E-T, -E, you, you give it out. To the measure that you give it out, that's the quantity that you get back. If I go out to a, you are gardeners, you know this, many of you are farmers, you know this. The more seed you plant in the ground, the measure that you meet out into the ground, that's the quantity that you can expect to get back. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. If you put one kernel of corn in the ground, don't expect a big harvest next year. If you put out more kernels of corn in a lot more rows, then you can expect to get a higher quantity back. That's the process. That's what Jesus is saying here. Pay attention and be careful what you're listening to, but the more you put into it, the more what, class? You're going to get out of it. A lot of people come out of church and they said, oh, I just didn't get nothing out of that this day. I didn't get a thing out of it. My question is, what did you put into it? What did you put into it? You get out what you put in. That is the process. So many people want to get out of the Word of God all this richness, all this goodness, all this wonderful stuff, but they don't put an ounce of study in it. They don't put an ounce of reading in it. They don't put any attention to it. And they're not going to get much out. They can't expect to get much out. It is a process. He says, and, look at the end of verse number 24, unto you that hear shall more be given. That's the rest of the process. Not only do you get back a larger quantity, 
by what you put into it, he says, the more you get out of it, the more you get. Now, that's a, that's a concept. The more you understand the Bible, the more you will understand the Bible. If we open up the Word of God and we read a scripture and we don't understand it, and we don't put the process to work, we don't study it, we don't pay attention to it, then that's it. That's all we're going to get out of it, and it's not going to be much. But not only is it not going to be much, we're not going to be able to understand anything further. But if I open up the Bible and I read that verse and I say, well, I want to understand that. So I pay attention to it. I make sure it's the truth. I'm careful what I hear. And I really put the time into it. I put the energy into it. I put the study into it. And suddenly I understand that verse much more clearly. Guess what? I will be able to understand even more in the next verse that I read. It is a fact class. If we, the more we understand the Word of God, the more understanding God gives us. The more we understand the Word of God, the more understanding God gives us. That's the process. And we've got to trust that process. And there is a promise. Here's the promise. It goes hand in hand with this process. Verse 25. For he that has, to him shall be what? Given. Now, now, somebody says, well, that's talking about wealth. If you, if you give, you'll be given to two or whatever. The more you get, the more you'll get. No, he's, that context is not talking about material things at all. He's talking about the Word of God. And so he says, the more Word of God you got, the more will be given to you. That is a promise. You say, well, I just can't understand the Bible. I just read it and I just don't understand it. Well, put more into it then. Follow the process. Trust the process. Be patient. But guess what? The more you start to get out of it, God has promised you, the more understanding He will give you. Just be patient. Trust the process. That's God's promise to all of us. But there is a problem. The same is true on the opposite side of that coin. Look at the end of that verse 25. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. If you don't understand the Bible, then God said there's a problem with that, and I'll take away your understanding. Even what little understanding you got, I'll take it away. And you see that happening all the time. People will become a Christian. They understand the Bible. They become a Christian. And then they go on through life, but yet they... They turn it off. They don't want to understand it anymore. They don't read it anymore. They don't, they don't do anything anymore with the Bible to increase their understanding and their knowledge. Guess what starts happening? Their understanding of the Bible starts depreciating. It starts going down. If you don't have understanding of the Bible, then it'll be removed from you. Even that which you have. Even that which you have will be taken away. Especially when you listen to the TV preachers and they start telling you false doctrine... And then all of a sudden you say, well, that makes sense to me. The reason that makes sense to you is because you're not studying the Bible. You're not careful what you're hearing. And suddenly the understanding that you once had that baptism is for the remission of sins, that you'd need to take the Lord's Supper on Sundays, and you had that understanding, suddenly it all starts going away. Because you're listening to things that is taking that knowledge away from you, taking that understanding away from you. Because you haven't built any further understanding. It's all part of the process. If you want to take advantage of the promise and not be a part of the problem. Now the parables, this is a parable about the lamp, right? But there's parables all around that. And the parables around it are not talking about the light and the lamp. The parables are talking about the seed. But the seed is also the Word of God. The Bible tells us the sower. That's the parable right before this parable of the lampstand. Right before it, he talked about the sower went forth to sow, and he sowed the seed, and he told his apostles, the seed is what? The Word of God. So just like this lamp, this light in this parable was the Word of God, the seed is the Word of God in the previous parable. Guess what? In the next parables, there's seed. Not light, but seed. 
And in those parables, the seed is the Word of God. So right in the middle of two or three parables, we see the same concept that the Word of God has all these things, but it's the seed as opposed to the light. But they have the exact same things. In the parable of the sower, it talks about the purpose. A sower went forth to sow, and he wanted the seed, the Word of God, to get into the right heart, to the good hearts. Now, there were some that went this way, there were some this way, but the purpose of this seed was to find its way into good soil, good heart. The next parable, which is found right after this candle that we just looked at in verses 21 through 25, is the parable of the seed. And this is where he talks about uh, planting the seed. Let's look at verse 26 of chapter number 4 of Mark. So the kingdom of God is a man should cast his seed back to seed now. He was at seed with the sower, and then he went to the light. Now he's back to the seed and again. It's the word of God. He cast his seed into the ground, and he should sleep. This fellow went to bed, and he rises up day and night, and the seed should spring and grow up. Listen, verse number 27 at the end. He knoweth not how. He was paying attention. I went to bed, I got up, and I looked. Nothing come up. I went to bed. I got up. There's something happening. Ah, I don't know how it's happening, but I'm paying attention to it. That's what this is. But it's continued. He says in verse number 28, For the earth brings forth the fruit, that's the plant coming up, of itself, first the blade, then the ear, then after that the full corn or the full grain. That's the process. This is how it happens. The Word of God gets into your heart, and then you pay attention to that Word of God, and all of a sudden it starts growing. There's a process to it. Then the next parable is the parable of the mustard seed. Remember the seed? Still the Word of God. And that seed is just little bitty, the smallest of all. But you plant it, and it grows into a, the greatest giant of all the other herbs. That's its potential. That's its potential. You put this little tiny mustard seed in the ground, in your heart, in your life, and it has the potential of growing into something wonderful, glorious. The candle said it'll shed light to your life. It'll reveal some things for you. It does a lot of wonderful things for you. But this seed, it can be great for you if you understand the Word of God. But there is a problem. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse number 33. After he told about these parables, whether they're seed or lamp, and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. There's a process. They just can't hear it all at one time and get it all at one time. No, there's a process. First the little blade, then it comes up a little bit, then it's got the ear, then it's got the full ear. You know, it's a process. And he yielded that. He, he shared it with them. As they were able to comprehend and understand it, the more they understood it, the more they got. The less they understood it, the less they got. That's just the process. But he says, but, verse number 34, without a parable spake he not unto them. The problem is, you don't understand it. You guys that don't understand it, it's going to be taken away what you do understand. That's the problem. Now, it does reveal the fact that Jesus was willing for them to understand it. He spake to them in parables. He told them the truth. He did it in parables. Maybe it makes them to stop and think, well, what is he talking about? The people who care, the people who want to pay attention, the people who sees the purpose of it, the people who sees the potential of it, they start digging into these parables. What did he mean by the seed? What did he mean by the sower? What did he mean by uh, the... the Good ground and the thorny ground. and all. What did he mean? They ask the questions. They pay attention. They go through the process. Those people will get it. But those other people, oh, he's just telling the farm stories. We don't get that. Well, no, you don't understand it. And it'll be taken away from you what you do understand. You'll never get it. So they go off and they do not get the full potential of what the Word could bring to them. But the people who do are the people who get the promise. Look at verse number 34 at the end. And when they were alone, 
his disciples. He expounded all things to his disciples. They asked the question, Jesus, what did you mean by that? Tell us that parable. And he said, let me tell you what it means. And he went ahead and told them what it means. He revealed it to them. That's a promise we get. If you'll ask the question, really seek it. I love it when somebody calls me up and they'll say, David, got a question. I've been reading Romans chapter 7, or I've been reading Isaiah, uh, this particular chapter, and, and I'm just curious. What do you think about it? That's just wonderful because I don't know the answer. I've been studying. Maybe you can help me to study it. Somebody calls and says, well, I thought about your lesson the other day. Uh, when you mentioned such and such, did you think about this? No, I didn't think about that. Well, what do you think about it? I, like, I love it. You're asking the question. You cause me to ask the question. And we get deeper and our understanding grows. The promise is that he can reveal all things to us. There is nothing hidden. Nothing in the page of this Bible that's hidden that cannot be made manifest or be made known. Now, will we know all of it? I don't think that any one human will understand the whole thing. But God wants us to know. He, he encourages us to know. Jesus wanted those people to know what the truth was when he gave those parables. He knew they wouldn't, many of them, but he wanted them to know. He gave us the Word of God for us to know. If somebody suggests that God gave the Bible and He wrote it so difficult that we can't understand it, they're missing the point. They're of the people who don't understand and this will be taken away from them what they do understand. It's the people who says, no, I don't understand it right now. But I'm going to pay attention to it and I'm going to trust that process of where I get a little deeper, study, what measure I meet, that's what I'm going to get back. And not only that quantity, the, the quality of it. It's going to get better every day of my life until I die. Is that where you want to be? Well, if it is, let me invite you to understand the Word of God when it comes to the plan of salvation. Just, just do we understand that part? There's so many things to understand about the Bible, but the plan of salvation is one that, a basic one we should understand. Have we really read Romans 10, 17? Have we really read Hebrews eleven six 6 and all these other verses that talk about what God expects us to do to be saved? Does it matter to us? Are we paying attention to it? If you're here tonight and you said, yeah, I paid attention to it and I've really studied. I put a lot of time into it. Then your understanding is, the promise is that you, you will understand even more. He who hath, more will be given. I think you understand it tonight. Now are you willing to respond to it? Are you willing to let that light that's set up on the candlestick benefit the whole house? Are you ready to let the understanding of God's Word when it comes to your salvation benefit you? Light benefits people. It exposes things and helps you to keep from stumbling and, and helps you to see. Now it's time to take advantage of the purpose of the Word of God, which is your salvation. Why don't you come forward and say, Hey, I want to be baptized. I see the light. And I want to respond to it. You say, well, I, I have been baptized, but let me tell you what's happened. I haven't been studying. I haven't been putting anything in it, not much. I haven't really been getting a lot out. As a matter of fact, the older I get, the less I understand. Guess what? God said that would happen to you. Isn't it time to repent of that and come forward and say, you know, I need to do better? Because as Larry prayed in his prayer, the more we understand, the more we learn, the better Christians we become. We invite you to come forward right now while together we stand and sing. What do you do with Jesus? And you must give an answer for something you must do. What shall it shall it be? What shall your answer be? What will you do with Jesus? Oh, what shall your answer be? What will you do Oh, uh -huh.
always appreciate your kind attention to the lesson. You know, we have something in our possession that God, the creator of the universe, breathed and put into our hands like, like we've never had it before in the history of mankind. Uh, people used to sell their farms just to get one copy of the Bible. And now we have the copy of the Bible here. We have it online. We have it in multiple versions, uh, translations. We have a blessing. So let's be encouraged to go out and take advantage of this wonderful blessing and try to understand the Word of God. If you say, well, I just haven't studied it like I should, find a way. Figure out a way. Find a, the, your best process, uh, whether it's devotional, just reading a chapter a day, reading a verse a day, whatever. The more you put into it, I promise you. No, I don't promise you. God promises you. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it and the more light. Your light will be enlightened. That's something. That's, that's his purpose. We'll sing one verse of 333 for a closing song. Number 333. And if you haven't had an opportunity to take the Lord's Supper, you know it's available right after prayer. Number 333. Jesus, the Savior, came down from above. Came to bring mercy and love. Crucified him, the mob scornfully cried. So he on Calvary died. While on the cross he prayed, Father, forgive. For they know not what they do. For us he died that for him we might live. Can he depend on you? Can he depend on you? His blessed will to do. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for all the blessings of life. We're so thankful for the opportunity to come out and worship you today. Father, we're grateful for the two great lessons we've heard here today. May each of us take it, apply it to our life, and be better Christians. Father, we ask you to be of the sick, especially those of our number. We pray that Van Roberts will get a good report when he goes to M.D. Anderson. Father, we ask you to be of all the sick all that's been mentioned here today. Father, be with those that's lost loved ones. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. And then of life's journey, Father, we ask you to give us a home in heaven. That's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.